Hey guys, welcome back. Man, I gotta tell you, it's been busy around here. Um, trying to get things uh, organized after work. Um, I got the PM45 mill sold. Um, that thing went quick, so I had to shift gears and get that uh, prepared for the guy who bought it from me and get it uh, put on his trailer. Um, I wanna talk about a few projects I have open-ended still. I'd like to wrap those up. Um, I have a few viewer requests on the Tom Lipton inspired uh, Unistruct tool holder holder thing. I don't know what you call it. Anyway, I'll uh, go over that um, and a couple other little things. Anyway, um, I almost have the new mill set up. Um, it just needs to be precision leveled. Other than that, uh, she's ready to go. Um, I want to show you a couple things on that. And other than that, that's about it, man. I plan on getting everything wrapped up this weekend. I got stuff all over the place. Um, I need to get organized. Um, I don't function well in confusement. Anyway, um, I'll start by saying that uh, part two of the Handle It hub for the Bridgeport style handles on the PM45 um, will not be happening. Like I said, I sold the PM45. Um, it went quick. I knew it would. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the gentleman who purchased it from me said he'd finish the hub. So, um, during that video though, I had a couple of viewer requests on which tool I was using to make that 200,000th uh, cut. Um, so, I'll show you the tool grind I used for that. It was a high speed steel tool bit and uh, we'll go from there and see where we end up. And I think I'm going to call this Mix Mash 1. That sound good? Oh well, anyway, be right back. Okay, I'll start with the uh, Unistrut uh, tool holder holder. Uh, Tom Lipton inspired uh, rack for the tool bit holders. Um, basically, I tried to copy Tom's design, but it would not work for me because I have a Series 200 or BXA uh, tool post on my lathe with series 200 uh, tool bit holders um, so it's a little smaller uh, dovetail so um, what I did um, I went to Home Depot and I bought the uh, super strut um, it's part number B 1400 HS uh, super strut I believe it is um, three-quarter inch super strut um, I have it written down over here let me give you the exact dimensions so you can just go to depot and get it. Um, it's uh, one and a half inches wide and three quarter inches deep. All right, and then what I got was some of this slotted angle. Um, this slotted angle is one and a half inch here and two and a half inch here. And all I did was um, slice off the width that I needed to work in here. Uh, then what I did, um, I got some of the uh, Super Strut uh, Quarter 20 nuts. They're the little nuts with the spring on the bottom. And some Quarter 20 bolts. And I basically just round these edges a little bit to make it smooth. And voila, adjustable tool holder rack. Um, I got my drill chuck over here. And all I did was bend one up a little different angle and drill a hole in it. That's it, man. Um, simple. I love it. It's great. Everything's right there. Um, you can switch out tools real quick. Um, and it's uh, just inexpensive. I think I spent 40 bucks for everything. Uh, bolts, washers, um, super strut uh, nuts, uni or unistrut nuts. Bolted it on here, and I got uh, room for additional stuff. Um, the only thing... Uh, I've noticed that it does since it's only a 14 by 40 inch lathe is it, it hits uh, on the work light but if I bend that forward there's no problem other than that that's it man we'll move on to the next item a few close-up shots of the uh, Unistrut rack and how I have it on the splash pan of my lathe I hope this helps uh, if you guys out there want to, oops, 
you guys want to do the same thing really comes in handy I was actually even thinking about putting a, um, a 110 outlet on the on the end of this thing for a tool post grinder or if you need to plug in something uh, that's something I can add because I left a little bit on it so there you go man really handy inexpensive uh, half hour project thanks Tom thanks for the idea man really handy item all right we're back um, a viewer requested um, what I was using to make that 200 thou cut on the 12L14 um, because it wasn't creating a big long uh, chip it was uh, creating real short little choppy chips which we all like so here's the tool bit I ground and which I used um, it's a USA high-speed steel um, I don't think it has any tool steel or cobalt or anything like that in it it's just something from uh, Inco but uh, here here's my tool let me see if you can get a, a good shot of that um, this strip you see here that's a piece of eighth inch aluminum um, I put that there to absorb uh, any vibration uh, from what I understand I guess aluminum has some really good vibration absorbing properties um, all I know it works um, I don't know the whole theory behind it a uh, very good machinist buddy friend of mine here local uh, told me to give it a try um, and it works so um, here's the tool bit I rough ground it on just a wheel like everyone else would um, my angles are uh, 10 degrees 30 degrees straight here 10 degree rake and all the other are, are um, between 8 and 10 degrees here now you're gonna see that these are pretty straight and shiny I'm gonna tell you how I do this and I've had some people in the past um, beat me up over this but you know what I use what works um, after I uh, grind this on a stone uh, freehand um, I have a little Harbor Freight belt sander which uh, let me take you over to it uh, let me cut the camera and take you over to it I have this table set um, it's either 8 or 10 degrees right now I, I can't remember it depends what I'm grinding but after I rough grind it um, I don't use a uh, Arkansas stone or uh, hand stone um, I just basically come over here line it up with the 10 degree um, 10 or 8 depending what I'm making the tool bit for and I touch it up on here I touch it up here and then I bring it over like this and I touch it up like that and I end up with this and I'll tell you what I have excellent results I've had people tell me this belt is rolling your tip over um, but I'll tell you what you could shave with that tip um, and I sharpen knives with this thing um, I go all the way down to a leather belt um, you could have a super high shiny uh, polished edge on here I mean it's perfect and then of course I just hit it right here on the edge for the radius uh, so let me cut and go back over so that whole Harbor Freight setup was like 25 bucks um, I get the I get the good quality USA belts at Enco for about two to four dollars a piece and um, that's what I use that's what I use for all my my hand ground tool bits and I usually have some really good results um, anyway I hope this helps you um, it works for me and I hope it works for you hey guys in this segment I wanted to talk about the inboard spider project which I never even finished yet but um, I had a friend that had a Mosin Nagant that he needed the barrel cut down and threaded to 5 8 24 um, and I was like oh great perfect opportunity to use the inboard spider well I used it in this fashion because um, the Mosin Nagant has a uh, odd shaped receiver and it's a bolt action rifle um, I didn't film this because my buddy's camera shy and really didn't want um, his rifle on video which I understand um, no problem but what we did is um, I don't even have my brass tips done for this yet I just been slacking sorry um, but what I did is um, I chucked up the uh, receiver of the Mosin Nagant in here used the four bolt adjusting bolts and then I used the tailstock to support the end of the barrel where I did my cutting threading crowning 
And I'll tell you what, man, this thing came in came in handy. It worked great. Um, I had to put a, a longer bolt so one of them could, could go down into the receiver. Um, so since I didn't have my brass tips on here yet, I just used little pieces of aluminum. And it, it held it rock solid. It um, Basically, I indicated it here on the uh, fatter part of the barrel, got it to zero, then zeroed it in my... Um, my uh, steady rest. I mean, my um, yeah, my steady rest, and uh, did all the work down there. But um, this thing actually really isn't done yet. Um, it's made to work either in the chuck or with the other set of adjusting screws, and in your um, your uh, steady rest. So um, yeah, if you have a piece of pipe lying around, make one. Um, I'm going to try to find a bigger piece of pipe and make a bigger one for larger. Um, a rifle receivers so you can fit bigger stuff in here um, I was at my limit with this one with that Mosin receiver because it is a big bulky receiver but it did fit in there I was able to to get it zeroed up um, I believe one side of it was all the way against one wall but uh, it worked out and it worked worked out well so I wanted to share that with everyone so anyway that's that Next up is um, an update on the mill installation um, and a couple little things I did to it uh, to get her ready. Um, I assure you it's not for show. Um, I made a couple test cuts. Um, it's rock solid. I'm really happy with it. Everything functions flawlessly. Um, I did have an issue with the power feed, so I replaced that. Um, good thing uh, Enco had a sale. Um, so. I got that. Um, so I'll bring you in and run it around here. I want to show you this neat little work light I found. Um, and other than that, that's about it. So let me uh, cut, bring you in. We'll start with the uh, collet holder. Um, I'm not one for drilling and tapping into machines. Um, this was already done. Uh, so I just uh, put it back on, put my R8 collets in it, and uh, went with that. It, it's pretty handy. Um, the only reason I used it, like I said, it was already there. Um, I did find this really cool little work light. Um, I got it from Ikea. Um, it was about 18 bucks. And sure enough, I don't know if you could see it, but I was able to mount this sucker in my collet rack with two washers. Um, it's not very bright, but I'll tell you what, man, it's it's going to work out just fine. Um, it, it'll work good for my old eyes. Um, see if I can. But it's uh, it's pretty versatile. Um, I got two. I got one over there on the closing too. Uh, it comes with a base. This one I left the base on there. And it has a little uh, hand switch. Um, but I'll tell you what, man. It's a neat little light. Um, it's got a plastic lens. So... Let's go back over here. Um, so it's, I'm not sure how durable it is. I'll, I'll tell you in due time. But anyway, I uh, got that. Um, I had to replace the vent cover here. Um, it was broken, so I got one from Webb and Corona. Um, like I said, the power feed was bad, so I replaced that. That's up and running and working good. Uh, I made these um, table covers. It's just ABS plastic with a uh, couple of slugs right here basically just to hold it from moving around just uh, took an end mill and put five eights and took this and put some epoxy and it, it uh, fits pretty darn nice on there so they are easy to wipe off um, I don't think the, the oils are going to bother it at all so um, everything's good man everything's working um, DRO works just fine I'm really happy with this. Um, no more guessing, man. Well, maybe a little bit. Uh, and then, uh, of course, uh, here I'll dem demo the uh, power feed. Hope you guys aren't getting seasick from this thing. Anyway. 
Um, there we are so far. Um, the part number for that light, um, like I said, it, it, it comes with a base that I didn't use here and a little spongy thing. But uh, here's the box it came in. It was at 18 bucks plus shipping. I might even pick up a couple more of these things. Very handy. Um, it's a great little light. Um, see if I could show you the little switch it has. I put that up here. That's it. Well, my first little project was going to be that handle for the mill, but like I said earlier, it's it's gone. So um, we're ready for our first project. Um, everything's uh, looking good. I got it cleaned up. Everything's working. Uh, time to make some chips, man. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, we'll be back in a minute for wrap up. I want to let you guys know I really appreciate all the viewer comments and uh, suggestions. Um, you guys have really helped me out along the way, and I want to thank you for it. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little uh, mix mash one of stuff. And uh, I got to get to cleaning up this place, man. I got stuff all over the place. It's driving me nuts. Anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit, and uh, we'll see if we can make some chips with this bad boy. And uh, I'm excited about putting it to work. So um, stay tuned, and uh, Chuck, this one's for you, buddy.